Hey guys, it's us here, Mark Our Man Man, with our 29th Mad Man podcast. Your home for all the latest and hottest gaming and nerd culture news for the week and beyond. I'm Mad Man, and I'm going to be discussing the many topics for today's show with our panel, See Money and Doodle. Hello, hello. Ooh, I like that. That emphasis yes. on and doodle. I am doodle, you guys. She is doodle, she is doodle with the proper intro. Nice. Was, was Thank you, Mad well Man, given. for that introduction. Oh, okay, what can I say? The gravitas. Yeah. And that intro was good. I mean, that mine was, was just like, I'm here with C. Status I'm here with right dude there. C Money, like this guy. But doodle yeah, yeah, yeah. has survived. Yes. That's great. I like you it. You know? I like it. I like it. Well deserved. Well deserved. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank oh. you very much. All right. So, yes. Another week. Another, another podcast. Man week, another podcast. podcast. And that you know what that means? That means? We, we got to talk about the content we put up lately. Yeah, yes, sir. So Madman, 642 oh. subscribers. Oh, what can I say? You know, it's pretty dope. Well. Oh, I know. I did promise two meal videos by the end of the uh, month. I will at least get one out because that's nearly complete. It'll go up today. So what you're saying nice. is that you so live getting... in a house of lies. <laughs> well, yeah. He's saying one you will go up today. promise two and you're going to give us one. <laughs> All right. The, the second one's a bit bigger than I anticipated. So it got a little inflated. So. Man, so man, I so believe you can do it, man, one. man. I believe you can do I it. I think you can still do it. Yeah. We have time. You'll come through. You okay. won't let your fans down. No, not, not at all. You won't let the channel down. No. <laughs> I never will. Well, thank you, you guys, for subscribing. Yes, and we if you are it. listening and you have not subscribed Just yet, do it, dude. hit that button. It'll make us Just so happy. It. Just do it. And not for nothing, you know, we still got some time. We're not that far away from hitting a thousand. No, we're really not. And guess what? There's a Nintendo Switch on the line for there one is. of you guys. Look, it's right here. Look, it's right yes. here. Yes. The Nintendo Switch Lite giveaway reminder. Okay, all we need is like 350 more subscribers. That's it. I think that's possible. Listen, it's doable. I think it's possible. I'll bet it by February is at the doable. most we'll get it. All right. But the idea here is that just do it. <laughs> just do it. Hit the button and look at all this just stuff Nike that you can it. see. Nike it. You know all right, guys? Like, there's a lot of stuff happening on this channel. A lot of different stuff. A lot of different gameplay. Oh, no. That wasn't the plan. Go back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah. Oh, so, Madman, you've been putting up some shorts. Oh, yeah. Some good shorts. Yeah, yeah. some very good yeah, shorts. A whole bunch yeah, of did stuff, a cool yeah. unboxing. Oh, of my the gosh. New PS5. Oh, yeah, the DualSense the, uh, Edge. DualSense Edge. Yes, yes. Talk yes. about trying to give Xbox a run for their money. Welcome PlayStation to this. It's so uh -huh. slick. Guys, I played. The Last of Us for the first time. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The and remake. I use the remake for PlayStation Which we'll be 5. Putting up soon. Last of yes. Us Part 1. It's called Part 1. Correct. And oh my gosh. So obviously we're doing it because we're doing the, um, the, uh, her, him, and a mic of the actual show, The Last of Us show on HBO, which is phenomenal. But I've never played the game before and we're playing it because, you know, we want to see how the stories align. And you guys, that controller is everything. Super yeah, comfy. It feels really good. It feels amazing. And aesthetically speaking, it is stunning. So what yeah. do you say, Doodle? Do you like the game's direction more or the show's direction more? It's a whole different experience different playing experience. the game. Like, you are very consumed. There's so much more content, which I thought we will find a lot more content, content on the television show. But I was completely wrong um, about that. Yeah. yeah, the only um, thing the show kind of has to explain the virus a bit better. But other than that, you know, like the game is the game. It's much longer. It's so it's like the action pack moments and you're just like holding your breath throughout. It's like it's really cool. Not to mention that I was thinking with a game that was that's like so old, I would I would find a lot of flaws. It's freaking stunning. Yeah, it's it's really really good. You guys gotta watch. We'll put it up soon. You'll be able to kind of hear what we're feeling while we're playing. Yes, um, but it's such a good, such a good good game. Um, and I love the I love the way they're adapting it for the for the TV show as well. So that's really dope. Now I will say like about the controller very the quickly. Of all time, so you know. Yeah. Yes. So, so about the controller though, I will say that the controller is really good. 
I really enjoy it. it. They fixed a lot of the problems that I had with the other PlayStation 5, the original PlayStation 5 controller, the standard one. Oh, yeah. If you um, hold the controller, it's like there's like a sharp part. Yeah, the but... sharp part sucks. And this is so smooth. It's rounded. It's really good. So this is elevated to a place where I consider it a top-tier controller. The Xbox controller is still better. I like the it's paddles on the Xbox controller better, better than these paddles, but these are serviceable. Um, but the biggest problem is the case. The case does not hold a candle to the Xbox case. And the reason being is because Xbox has the pass-through where you can charge your controller in the box. And you just push the controller down in its contact base. So you put the controller down, the contact in the back touches, your case is plugged in, oh, boom, oh, it oh, automatically oh. charges. Yeah, the yeah, PlayStation yeah. 5 remote has a little cutout in the back of the thing that you can put a wire through, but nothing holds it in place. So it's just like a like you just put the wire through, and then you have to physically plug in the PlayStation 5 yeah, controller. Stinker, but for so it's kind of a pain in the ass fantastic. to do it. Aside from that, though, the controller itself is super dope. I do believe right. the case is better looking, though. Like for the uh, PlayStation, it's just it has such a slick look. I just love the finesse. I don't know. I mean, it's like a hard shell it's, versus the 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 material yes. feel of the Xbox One, uh, which so makes it, it look which sharp. makes it look much it looks sharper, sharp, much yeah. smoother. Um, um, and the box, it's the the case itself is really nice. It's just that that one thing is a big big thing. That's a big deal because if you if it's on contact, almost like a magnet, you just, yeah, you just place it. You know, it's charging, you know, it up, but it to go ahead and. Uh, and then go around and trying to get the, the yeah the like if you have a setup like in, we do where we have the I have the Xbox case set up in a specific place I just grab the controller put it back we're done I have the PlayStation box set up in a uh, you know the case set up in a specific place but every time I do it I have to grab the pl- the controller unplug it it moves the ca- you know it moves the case because it's not you know easy to just do. Um, then, you know, you got to make sure the wire doesn't fall out of the case. So you have yeah. to make sure there's enough slack so it stays in there. Yes. And then you have to put it back and, like, rearrange everything. It doesn't sound like much, but it could be annoying. Yeah, it's, you know. It's, I do like the, the joysticks much better on the PlayStation controller, though, for me. I mean, that's... So, and I also like really... I, I'm very visual, so I like really pretty things. So, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. That's right. So that's for right. me, that it. slick look, it. you know, might be it. worth just battling around with the freaking wire. <laughs> no, it's it's really good, though. I, I, I do like it. It's a good controller. That's for sure. So, I have made some delicious content over this weekend and stuff like that. You're going to get some new videos from uh, the Madman Plays line and Duels Never Have I Ever. She already talked about one. The last was part one. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. You guys will be getting a lot of good content. Is coming week. So yep. Now, and then Mad our, Man. Go ahead. Huh? That video was freaking hilarious. That uh-huh. short. Which one? When the girl you like has a boyfriend. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Pretty good one. Pretty good yeah. one. You guys. Out. Yeah. It was really good. You it was so it. good. But it's solid. You, you yeah. Yeah. It for sure. So, you know, you, you for sure. Yeah. You guys should check it out. Well, um, yeah, that being said, our little buddy, we like have our Barry. homie, Purple Berry. Is crushing it yes. out in the streets. He's almost oh catching my up to us. It's kind of scary. It's crazy. 613 subscribers. It's wild. It's, it's listen, week, well it deserved. Well, how much was it last I week? I think it was 441. 441? That's wild. Guys, dude. if you have not checked dude, out her channel, put this check on it out. Because just watch this. Is this is amazing. This oh, is yeah. uh, the Ninjoy. Her stop motion project. She, yes. She unboxed her Nendroid, and instead of doing just a regular unboxing, this is what she, she did it with into it. A stop motion. It, I listen. Well deserved. Phenomenal job, Purple Berry. This is freaking awesome. That's really cool. That's yeah, really, that's her first time doing this type of thing. So you know, some people gave her some helpful comments, which was cool about yes. how to make it a little smoother. But she, I mean. That's so dope. Like I, that turned out I so watched well. it and then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like not a cartoon. This is not a um like a this is a toy that's <laughs> watching move. Like this is like an enjoy. Like I don't know. It was it was it's so good. Yeah, yeah. But like even I, I if you don't you think do you're like that'd be pretty cool. Even if you don't think you're into this type of stuff, 
Stop motion? She I, no, just just the stuff on her channel. Yes. Like these the, you but like will she, get lost in her you channel. Do, like you, you start will scrolling start, through here click and you're on like, oh, something shit. and you're like, oh, let me click on something else and before you know no. it, you're just there. So no. if you guys have not checked it out, go check it out. And she's, go she's, subscribe. She puts a lot of catchy bangers on there yes. too. Like the music is pretty top notch. Yeah, and a lot of the, the stuff she makes is based on trends that are popping and she takes her own little funny spin on it. So yeah, that. she's so good. Yeah. She's, Congrats, Purpleberry. Yeah, Very well deserved. And with that, just hit that subscribe button for both of us. Go to Purpleberry. And, Purple and the Craft. bell. Who doesn't like a bell? I love ringing you bells. You know? Ring that bell. Bells are super ringable. You yes. Definitely ring the bell. Um, yeah, so subscribe, ring the bell, share it out to friends, they let know, your friends they, know. Super next? helpful. And again, don't forget, we're doing that uh, giveaway. We're doing thousand. two giveaways. Then, the, oh, the, Purple the, Berry has a giveaway that she's going to be doing soon. Yes. So, you, just, you know, when she's not announcing it yet, but there is a giveaway coming. She will be cool. announcing it sometime next week. And right. um, she's very excited for it. It's her first giveaway. So she's pumped. She's so pumped. Yeah, that's dope. All right, man, man. Take us in. Away? Is it time already? Take us away. Topics. Let's go, madman. Right, topics are going to be pretty crazy this week, so hold on to your hats. Oh, whoa, whoa. So, <laughs> Justin <laughs> Boylan will no longer voice Rick and Morty, nor will he work on the show, period. Adult Swim has officially cut ties with him due to domestic charges pressed against him. Dan Harmon will now be the sole creator of the show, and it will continue to at least season 10. But it doesn't stop there, because Hulu has cut ties with our boy as well, because of the allegations, same reason. And he has officially resigned from Squanch Games, who uh, are responsible for High on Light, Trevor Stays the Universe, etc. Yeah, things are not going good for him. So, well, yeah. I mean, um, can you imagine if this is false? Like, uh, no, he actually did not do it. Like, what's going to happen? It's going to be like a well, Johnny Depp scenario. Let me tell you something. The fact that he resigned. Yes, that says everything. Squanch that, Games. Yep. Let you know that 100%, at least. At least some of it is true, and it's true to the point that even if it's not to the extent that it's it will being complained, affect them and their company, mm -hmm. like it's already a damning situation for him. So, you know, listen, as much as it sucks for the shows and the games, as far as just the talent that is being lost, yeah. like, uh, listen, he has obviously done a lot of things, he's made a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, he'll still and get whatever paid. he like did, he should not have done. And you live a life and you learn your lessons and you have consequences for your actions. And it's, it's you do inappropriate things or you do hurtful things or you do wrong things and shit comes around to get you. And, you know, at least at least he has money. Right. right? Yeah. So he's not it's he's not like out on life support. Right. He's going to be fine. But and listen, I, I hope she gets a nice chunk of that money she gets a lawsuit, um, with with everything that she, it's out there. About? But um, wait, wait, what do you mean so she? The person the that, person. that she, he did the thing to. Yes. Oh, I mean, so, there's also the DMs that leaked and some of that. It's not looking good for him. So, okay, yeah. so I, I love how, like, his lawyer came out and was like, this will be done in, like, a week or whatever. This will be, they didn't know like, that she kept brushed off. And the I love that there were receipts. They mostly, did not see. They like, obviously they didn't see this coming. But there were receipts, and she had the receipts. Um. And so make it worse, they had to be underage, like, like, geez, like that's so, like I don't think he's gonna wiggle his way out of it, like the Etcher Miller situation. Well, there's no wiggle. Well, obviously, man, man, we're we don't want him to wiggle well, his no. way out of it, right? Well, no. Like, there's no like wanting. Like the we're not Miller hoping situation. that he wiggles he his way out. His way out, despite the crimes, the physical crimes he did and stuff like that. Yeah, but so I don't think that's gonna happen. For him. Well, he thought he was thing. going to get himself out of this situation, and his lawyer obviously thought so too, and that they were gonna just smoothly be done with it. The fact that he resigned says a lot about what took place um, and potentially a lot more than what she has receipts for and who knows what took place it's before. It's such a hard thing. But, like, I, I would love for justice to be served. I do want justice to be served. It also, it will, no matter how big or small it might be, it will 100% affect the show. Like, sure, there are people who can do things to a T. TikTokers that, like, especially this guy, Sean Kelly, there are people who can do incredible impressions. However, most of it's stuff with improv. So even if it's not by as big of a thing or a little, it will be affected in one way or another. It may not be as funny. The comedy might be different. Something's going to happen, and that's going to stick. Okay, but there was shows that were funny before he made a show. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure people can do it. There's plenty of comedians. There's plenty of people who are quick with the, the mind where they can say things 
that are a lot of the, right, the right. even funny movies. A lot of the actors they come out and a lot of the lines, like look at Chandler from Friends, right? Yep. A lot of the things it was kind of like, well, this is the idea where we want it to go, and they, they kind of just do lot. your thing, right? Because yeah. when you know this type of stuff and you are known or you are used to like being funny and putting your own spin on things. You can do that. Now, the thing about this guy is obviously he's like the guy that plays SpongeBob making the voice and yeah. stuff like that. Ooh, but there are I'm a sorry. lot of talented people out there that point. do end up making these voices and practice all this stuff. Um, Actually, I, the voice of SpongeBob is in Rick and Morty. He does multiple voices as well. Yeah. So I do like the fact that there they are we we are seeing People with money and power paying for their mistakes and their mess ups, right? Yeah. Because a lot of times, it's even hard to say mistakes, right? It, well, yes. Yeah. Why they're, you did they're, it? It wasn't a mistake. Up. You, you know what you, you did. did this, right? So the, they just got caught. Exactly. But yeah. a lot of times, these people get away with it because they have power and money. So it is good to see people pay for their stuff. Now, I would like to know how long ago he did this. Twenty twenty. Yeah, two years he got away with it. Season well, five and six. When did me. hashtag Me Too happen? A while before that. That's why I'm saying, like, this is just, like, the receipts that came out. And this is just the first time that we hear about something like this. But yeah. it's not necessarily the first time that something like this could have happened, considering the fact that it did take place, right? I so, kind of wonder, why didn't they come out with this two years ago? Why now? It takes a lot, right, for somebody to step up and say, "Okay, this happened to me," right? And we don't, we don't know. And I don't, you I need don't to honestly find a lawyer who will believe you, who will be too, willing will, to take the chance because it is a when you do these allegations, it's not a, it's not easy. Like he's a it's famous not person, right? So yes. first, you have to like prove that you, a regular person, even has this connection with the famous person, right? Exactly. And then you have to have people who will believe you and support you to do it. And you're taking a big risk putting your name out there and being known as something. So it's scary to because if you lose, right, if they say, uh, no, your evidence doesn't work or it's not, then you it's scary as a person. Yes, I, of course. You, you have to be very brave. Listen, look to at this, this, this whole thing with Johnny Depp, right? Yeah. And the, she she lost the case, right? We don't obviously I don't know exactly what happened there, but like. This does something to your to you, to your name and everything. But aside from that, just having the the courage or feeling like you can't go through and speak your truth and not be like there's a lot of judgment out there. Right. So listen, you also don't know who did it. Right. Because she's young. Yes. Right. So maybe at the time she was super into the idea. Maybe her parents found the messages or, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe somebody else saw it and was like, yo, this is, this not, is okay. not okay yes. that this happened. Like you don't know. You don't know well, 100%. Yeah, because also as, as sometimes you don't realize like kids don't how understand. bad something, like young people yes, are, how bad something is until it kind of like sinks in or you, you, you like, you know, sometimes you just have to. You, it, the terms click like you kind of like oh okay well yeah, that she wasn't could have been right. talking to somebody about it and they could have told her like that's the scenario it's complicated you know like you don't know what's really going on behind the scenes and stuff like that <laughs> and you never know who's the good guy who's the bad like it's weird like, like Johnny Depp ended up being, he didn't do anything wrong in the end. And Amber well I mean well, see, well, let's, let's hold thing. on first of all we, law that's, that's what law I law doesn't mean that that person didn't do anything wrong or did do anything wrong. They just found it to be that case. Nobody was there, right? So what that means is Johnny Depp was able to prove more than the other person, right? There's obviously That's why something That's you'll never really know the answer. Yeah, there's never that. It's, law is just law, right? Yes, you don't it's know. Not, it's, not, it's not clear, right? Yeah, it's just it's, who could be proven guilty, exactly. proven innocent. And there's That's also all. a jury, right? And yep. you have to, like, it, it just a lot goes into it. She's still fighting it. Um, and listen, the point is, we're not there. We don't know exactly what took place, but these things don't just pop out of nowhere. And that's just the truth. But, yeah. um, with so that what, said, I don't know if the show, how the show will be affected. I don't know. Um, th this game can't catch a break. So for me though, this is what <laughs> I was, I wanted to talk oh, about with yeah. the game because 
as much as it's like a a big deal that this is happening, mm-hmm. let's let's be clear. Justin Roiland did not make this game. He might have funded the game or been no, a yeah, part of yeah, that. Maybe. Or but he didn't make it, meaning the physical coding and all that stuff. Like this game was fun to play. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So the people who made this game are still there. It, the voice that he made was great, but it also wasn't every gun. Each gun had a different person who did the voice. And the other g- guns were funny. The other guns were good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess the whole point is that it takes an entire team to yep. get a game going. It takes more Same than on the show. It takes, it takes more, more than, than the just voice. one person. Yes, it it's takes probably- more than just the voice of the main character for a show to be running. Writers, producers, like it takes a lot more, and there are a lot of people involved that can be affected in their families and it should not all just be vanished or taken down by one's action, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm glad it's still going for the sake that they're not picking everyone out. It's like, uh, it's one of those situations where like, like Rick and Morty, a lot of the funniest episodes, like they, they, like they made a bunch of volumes of recording him. He was like drunk or he was like just doing whatever and he had a script in front of him he just started saying a bunch of stuff and they end up being some of the funniest parts of the entire show, literally of the entire show. So it's like, Okay, but the, but the show wasn't good because he did that. Because that's not enough to make a show a watchable. No, you have the characters that were created, their storyline, their background. That was not improv. Yes. That was, that was like, thought out, right? The art style. The, like, all that stuff is thought There's out. There's so, so much that goes into it that he, it, yes, everybody liked his impressions. The fact that he had to get drunk to be, make some of his best stuff, Rick, maybe it's, not. It's probably not, a bad sign. Yeah, it's probably a really <laughs> bad sign and, well, and a, a bad drunk. situation. Well, that's why he's, he drinks a bit when he's doing Rick, because to get, to be in character. Well. Like, how in GTA, one of the characters was, like, in their underwear when recording a lot of scenes. You know what, too? When I, like, if I'm making a violent video game, I like to murder somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like what right the heck? Right before I do the, the thing, yeah. because I'm a method actor. Uh, you know what I'm crazy, saying? So right? like, like, it's like uh, in Family Guy, twenty plus characters right? are voiced by Seth MacFarlane. Like, he voices like, twenty plus characters, and they're all different sounds. Okay, but you could do that without having to get drunk or high or doing any of that stuff exactly. to make it happen. Like you should just be your talent, right? You should be able to portray that without having to go and actually experience these things, right? Like and and be in involved in them or in them. Um, but sorry, but I do think that they they are going to find a replacement. I think that had he stayed and not resigned, this could have like taken the whole ship down. I think that there's a lot of work to do. Oh yeah, right, and they will have to make some exceptional stuff in order for for it to like continue. Yeah. Some people think about maybe a famous actor. Like some people want Robert Downey Jr. as Rick. I'm like, that's stupid. Well, but, well, you know, obviously well, somebody like that's not going to spend. Someone like that is not like going that. to do it. But Mad Men actually, you know, that will create some light into this whole mess, right? Yeah. So like actually somebody else get an opportunity. Yes. And yeah. and somebody and going with somebody about. famous that people really like may give um this show a chance like yeah like i think that this might be the season might be the most one of the most popular seasons because you're just wondering how did it turn out that's yeah. true the garbage or what like what happened to and it? the game is i'm excited for the fact that and thankful for the fact that justin roiland was attached to it because it made everybody look at squanch games as something and it, it kind of brought their name into the light and they then they released a good game it's to go things, with it because like, people uh, there's never... plenty of companies who make good games that never get burned because they don't have the publicity to go with it. They say this but, mostly is bad publicity. Like well, being a... yeah, but th- this is before the bad publicity. This was already put into light. I'm not saying, I'm not saying the bad thing he did is putting it into light. I'm saying before be this came out, his name was attached to this, and people took. Notice. I mean, I liked it. I, I was interested because it was ju- just a really created Rick and Morty, and I was like, "Oh shoot, now I will try that game." And exactly, I really but it turns game. out to be a good game regardless of. Yeah, well, it's not just him, but the attachment of the name made me interested. Yeah, so that it's that's already happened is what I'm saying. So hey, maybe now that for, name maybe, is already maybe a big they'll make thing. another game, and maybe they we will, can get 100%. Mindy involved. Mindy, Mindy, yeah. Oh, oh my god. 
Why you know, not? That's funny because Rick and Morty, like, everyone's talking about how garbage Velma is, but now you hear nothing. It's always just Rick and Morty. Now everything's gone. To sh- no one's even talking about Velma. Listen, everything, ta- everything, just people just move on, right, yeah. to the next thing. Velma, people, people still hate Velma, Velma, but the show has. But they hate. Uh, I love Velma. I think yeah, the Velma's show is freaking fantastic. So not people in general. Some people hate. Velma, okay. and they are the very loud, loud about the it. Loud yes. people hate it, but everybody else is just watching mm-hmm. it and having a good time and enjoying the show. All right, so with I that, think Justin Roiland is out, move on. and we're done with him too. Yes, Madman, Sayonara. bring us home. What's the next one? Okay, <laughs> well, Netflix claims that they have never canceled a successful show. Yeah, I know, no, sh- but like, listen to this. In the wake of the backlash received for canceling shows such as Inside Job. Netflix claimed that the shows they have canceled were not successful or profitable, and that if they were, they would 100% proceed with future seasons. And they have said that the um the shows that they were fought, that have gotten canceled were intended for small audiences on big budgets, which was not sustainable. So, what do you guys have to say about that? I think it's ridiculous no to brainer. think that Netflix will cancel a show that it's bringing in. Um, it like viewers. If anything, like, they they, they just, just keep continuing. continuing. Like they confer like fifteen seasons after that. Obviously, not that dramatic, but you know. Well, they have. It's, maybe it's sh- always a business, right? Like we can't lose sight of this stuff. So they do so much. They do so many different shows, and they're constantly coming out with new ones that they can't sit around. Hoping and waiting that one is going to do something. To see if something works because th- that's not the only show that they have. Also, the only line that I'm like a little bit like, okay, why will you even start that? It's a big budget show that is for a small audience. Like, why will you even touch that? No, no, because that? you don't know. But the point the- is that you don't know that 100%. But look at Wednesday. It comes out. Adam's Meaning, family was always um like people liked Adam's family, but it was never big. Wednesday blew up, but that was chance. That, that's what I'm saying. Risk. You don't know that it's good. What they're saying is that a small audience loved the show. Yeah. And continuing to make that show was going to be a huge budget for not a lot of people to watch it. And even though it might be a critical darling, like it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's costing us a lot of money. And there's the, the lines are not there for it. Listen, I mean, it's upsetting. To, Go ahead, Mad Men. They have to make big numbers. You yeah. ever wonder why Cobra Kai just keep going for as long as it did? How Stranger Things is going? Squid Game, Monster, Wednesday. Obviously, shows with big numbers. Also, why Cobra Kai seasons. is ending. What? Yeah, I said Kai, also no, no. why if Cobra Kai me, is I said ending. Why it continued for as long as it did? No, no, no I know. But I'm. But I, what I'm saying is, it, it's not about how it could. I mean, that's part of it. But what I'm saying is that also. The reason why it's ending. The reason why it's ending. Yeah, they're ending it on their own accord. But again, they would not end it on their own accord if it was going crazy and the numbers were going high. The numbers have obviously been dwindling since the beginning and they've lasted this long. And what they don't want is to be in a position where next season, the numbers get so low that Netflix cancels it. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is end it on their own terms, take control and say, okay, Netflix, this is our last season. And not ruin and the, the numbers brand. are going to be high because it's the last season. So they end on a high note instead of a low note. I agree. So again, the numbers don't lie. The numbers tell you everything. If you like a show and it gets canceled, it's because the numbers weren't there. And because Netflix has so many other things that people are in love with, they're not afraid of people leaving because that show is canceled because not a lot of people watch that show. Unlike like, TV shows like um, the uh, what was it the Mindy Project or Brooklyn oh. Nine Nine right these things got canceled on their networks because they weren't picking up a lot of viewers yeah but they got but then they got picked up, up somewhere networks. else because they're like yes. oh well it's a critical darling or like people like it so maybe if we take it on you know yeah. people will come to us who weren't watching it you know what I'm saying yeah that, well, the last man standing that, that, oh it's my like gosh I was it won't just, die like, I was done <laughs> Which one? Fox? Yeah. NBC? No, I probably got that wrong. What, what, mo- what show? Jumped around Last Man Last Standing Man. with Tim Allen. I was I couldn't remember the name. I was about to just ask you guys, see if you guys remember. But that show has been all over the like, place. It's it. been, I don't know what it is. It's been canceled. I, I personally like the show. And it's crazy because they've, they've um lost some of the main characters awesome. and brought... Have like, they? yes, one of... One of his daughters was changed right in the beginning. They have three daughters, oh, yeah, right? That, and yep. then the other, um, I forget her name, but uh, like I think all the daughters were replaced at one. 
at some point, ex- I believe, except for one. Um, the, the, mil- but, the, the youngest the, Yes, but she did leave to go to the military, which essentially is she's not really in the show. Because she wanted to do other She wanted to do other and things, stuff. yes. And she's done pretty good things. She has. Well, well, Tim Allen and the wife, they, 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 I think they were the most consistent. And then there's like Kyle and like some other characters. But Yeah, so like, like the, the show is maybe. really good. So um, I can see why it continues to get picked up. Brooklyn 99 was also uh, uh, yeah, a yeah, that was also very good going. As well, it was, yeah, super funny, but like, it was all over the place. And it's like, why are you guys canceling this show? Oh, it got picked up again, you know? Mindy Project went to diff- a different yep. network. and It was a Hulu original at one point too, right? Uh, yes, actually. Yes. Yep. But it only, like, it only ran for, like, after that, it just did, like, one more season or something like that. But, like, it ran its course. And, and Brooklyn 99, I feel like, and Last Man Standing have hung on for much longer. Did Last Man Standing end? Uh, I don't, I think it's still going. Jeez, That's it, the like, thing. I don't know. Like at that point, I'll just be too scared to keep going. I'll be like, you know what? This is it. I'm Why? Done. Every every season should be freaking thrilling and exciting, not knowing if it'll be your last. Right? <laughs> well, but what if you end it in a way that like this season's the next one, and you just can't get anyone to do it? Well, like, you know what? Then that's what was supposed to happen. It is what it is. But yeah. So moving on. All right. Moving on. Moving on like a train. Chugga chugga choo choo. A choo choo. Golden Knight 007 has officially released on Nintendo Switch via Nintendo Switch Online. This also includes an Xbox release via Game Pass. The Nintendo Switch Online version will have, well, has online multiplayer. Xbox is relegated to local multiplayer. So, what do you guys have to say about this? Well, we just, uh, we actually, that's one of the things we recorded. We played a little GoldenEye. We did a gameplay, Xbox, yes. In an no, age like Fine One. Um... You know, it's it definitely showed his age, but it was pretty cool. I mean, gameplay it. wise, it was fun. Um, but yeah, it's really good. I mean, I'm I'm glad it came out. Um, I'm glad it's available. Um, I I wish it was a remake. Like I, I, mean, I wish it was a a heavy remake where they updated the graphics. Well, not don't just be don't be surprised that they're just doing this to see how it takes because it was such a huge game. Right, so maybe they just want to see how people feel about it when they jump back into it, and maybe like they remember the rumors of Persona that's 3. The plan. Release a remaster, which people are not even liking anyway, and then have a, re- a remake this summer, reportedly. So maybe GoldenEye, they're gonna finally remake it as an Xbox exclusive and make it gorgeous. Could you imagine? That'd be crazy. I mean, maybe. Um, I mean, probably licensing issues. That's the only problem. They like, probably like they were gonna remaster it back in the 360 for arcade, but that went down the drain. So you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's more of a nostalgia thing. Now people have access to the fact that the game is it's available. Well, mind you, you know? I had zero nostalgia for GoldenEye. I, I wasn't born even when it came out. But the game is still pretty fun. No, I Gameplay mean, is fun. Graphically, it's it's disgusting. But otherwise, graphically, I mean, no, no, no. Stupid. Gameplay-wise, it's a fun game. I had a fun time. You yeah. can probably see how fun, much fun we had when we put up the Madman Plays eventually at one point. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's cool. It's it's um I'm glad it's here. It was exciting to see that it was coming. Um and I mean I know the Switch one has the online. I could probably say that I if the Game Pass, if the Xbox had it online, I wouldn't I wouldn't play it online. Like it's not that kind of You have been interested in playing game. the uh what do you call it? The single player campaign. Yeah, that I wanna I wanna kinda go through um because that was fun. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a good game. I'm glad it's here. I would love a remake. That would be dope. Um, but aside but, from that, do you have anything else to add, Doodle? No, not necessarily. Okay, well, that was Check a, out the gameplay. a quick hitter. Yeah. Oh, I guess one thing I could add. Sure. Go to 007. This really, this game showed that even if it's based on like a movie or it's just a simple tie-in, it could be just as amazing if you put the time and energy into it. Like, sure, GoldenEye's not a looker anymore. But back in the day, this was crazy. So, like, if you look at games like GoldenEye, they show that just because you're, uh, it's meant to be released for, to promote a movie doesn't mean it can't be special. And that goes for games like the Scott Pilgrim game or the South Park The Sick of Truth or SpongeBob uh, Battle for King Bottom and stuff like that. Like, if you put the time and energy, you could make something truly special. And that's what these companies have to do. And that's what they're starting to kind of do with some of these franchises, putting more time into it. Like Bethesda doing an Indiana Jones game and stuff like that. So, if you, this shows, like, how revolutionary it was. And it was for a movie, so that can really show you if you put it, if they put the time and energy, something incredible could come out of it. Oh, man, man, that's a great point, actually. It is a great point. Yeah, I agree, 
hundred um, percent. Also, there was this interview with Phil Spencer um, where he talks about a lot of things. You guys should check it out. Um, I don't know what information is on there, but you know he's. You know, oh, anytime, so you anytime Phil Spencer, I think he was talking about High for Rush. Anytime Phil Spencer has a uh, a interview, you're gonna get some some nuggets out of there. So we might dive deep on that for next week if there's anything that we find out that's cool from there. All right. All right, man, man. Next topic, sir. All right. So, Lego Batman, Batman 4 has been leaked. Supposedly, TT Games is currently developing this game, and it will release for all modern platforms. But the big thing about this is that there was supposed to be a Lego Disney game in development, where you get to use all kinds of wacky Disney characters, but that was canceled in favor of Lego Batman. Most likely, this is because Disney's success with uh, uh, Dreamlight Valley. They probably don't want to throw in another Disney game that's similar. So, basically, this... I'm excited because I remember Lego Batman. The games were quite good, even for Lego standards. So hopefully, seeing how good Lego Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker looks, I mean Skywalker Saga looks, and how graphically impressive, and with the third-person sort of like gameplay that they implemented, I hopefully they'll do a modern, cool Batman game that has like a very modern feel rather than the reskin Lego games that they've been kind of doing, where it's the same game, but with new skins and cool worlds and all that. Which, I mean, basically the last major game that I, Lego game that I beat and actually liked genuinely was Lego's going to cover because it was more like a GTA style game. Yeah. Which also got a remaster slash remake, which was very good. So basically, I think that with this game, I'm pretty excited. Hopefully it'll be decent. What do you think? What do you guys think? Well, who knows why they dropped the Disney situation? I mean, we know. There was development troubles. Yeah, but we also know how Disney could be with their they're real um, sticklers. They're know? characters, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was probably um, a lot smoother and cheaper to get um, the DC <laughs> characters, especially considering the fact that they're shaking up the house and they're making some changes. And this is actually a really good way to put their um, heroes and villains up front and bring some light and attention to um, to their world, the DC world, right? Um, Absolutely. I mean, so, I love Batman, so yeah. I'm, I'm and down. I mean, who who is it that voices him? That it's like Arnold uh, Arnett, Will Arnett. Man, Will Arnett. Well, in the is, Lego games. he is freaking perfect. He's so funny. Uh, maybe he, they'll have him in this time because the past three Lego games he was always like Kevin Conroy, who unfortunately passed away. So maybe Will Arnett will take the harness, or they'll just go for a more classical Batman style. Will Arnett is the Lego Batman of all Batman. He's, he's the okay? only Lego Batman that exists yes. in my heart. That's right. He's, yo, really first try. Movie. First try. That's so fucking funny. Yo. It's just like, it, it's something about him and his voice when he does this yeah. arrogant thing. Like, it's arrogant, just, that's what it is. I just see like his, like, I see it guy. even in his face. Like, you think of his face and you yeah. hear the words and you're like, yeah, he said that. You know? I don't know. I, I, I just, he's Batman. But he's like, Lego you compare Batman. him, he sounds nothing like traditional Batman, but he also sounds like so much like Batman at the same time. No, he's Lego Batman. He's his, Le- yeah, he is Lego Batman. Like, Lego that's what I feel. Batman. Yeah, he was, I, the point is that he was only Batman in Lego movie, Lego Batman movie, and Lego movie 2, the second part. That's why but he's still, Lego Batman. That, that just shows how impressive his performance was. So that's Yeah, cool. I mean, he was freaking awesome. Uh, one of my favorites in the movie. Oh. Um, Like, just waiting. Or to to hear what Batman was gonna say next, yeah, you know, sure. yeah, he was one of the best parts of the movie. Exactly, that's saying a lot because Lego Absolutely. movie was really good. The first one was great, actually. So you know, agreed. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is this is necessary. Almost, I feel like with all the changes coming, so I can only imagine that it's gonna be a great game. Lego games, um, especially that one from the freaking Lego movie was amazing. Um, I mean, they could be really good if they really put their yeah, the game right, on. yeah, yeah. They're they're. They're a consistent type of game. I think the I think they kind of got old, like the style of game kind of got like people got disheartened with them. And I think that the Lego Star Wars Skywars, uh, Skywalker like Saga is a though. big change. Now it's on it's on game it's on Game Pass, right? I think it just got Game Pass. You know? Yeah, so it's on Game Pass. So I think uh want to check it out. And yeah, see how it is. Um, I think I will maybe too. we'll do a Doodles Never Have I Ever. Oh, maybe I mean, that, 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 that's your. That, that, I think that, that would be worth the title of Never Have I Ever. So you know that'd be yeah. pretty fun. Yeah. How many players? We can play co-op, two players. Yeah. Um, okay. So we can play co-op and see if we like it. Um, nice. But that's yeah. I mean, it's it's look, it's Lego Star Wars. It's gonna be a fun time. Do you guys remember Batman, the old Lego time. games where there's somehow somewhere 
you will get stuck. Always. And there was they like st- no still the way of getting th- like repetitive. Think, I think that's why we kind of don't play them because especially when you try to play them with the kids. Yes. Like you get stuck. It's frustrating. Or the kids will be playing. They get stuck. It's frustrating. It's like. Yeah. And this. then they look at you like, um, figure this out. And you're yeah, like, like oh, I can't do it. That's man, why I I'm about play. to look super right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. I, I, obviously, anything Batman, I'm excited for. Um, and this will be, I'm assuming, well, they'll probably still do cross generation, but I mean, they'll yeah. at least have a focus on the next gen. So, you know, maybe there'll be some big graphical, like, I want that shit to look like the movie. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you imagine uh, the bricks have actual textures. Yeah, absolutely. They, they came out with a PC Lego game that's like focused on ray tracing. That's stunning what do you mean which one it's just a p it's just literally a lego game like lego builder or something like that you you just use you build different things Maybe with the worlds, legos but, but it likes it looks amazing but guys can we just real quick um just note the fact that like we talked about how hbo had a batman show going on that was like dropped and yes i mean the kid crusader exactly and they were like cleaning the house and you know I, I did say, like, you know, they know what they're doing. They know what they need to do. They're just trying to figure things out budget-wise and everything. If if it were that great, they wouldn't. If there were more coming in than going out, they wouldn't drop anything, right? Yeah. But can we just highlight the fact that HBO did all these things, right? Late last year, we, we, we talked about it. And, dude, 2023 is just we're first month, January. And we're talking about The Last of Us and Velma. And they're off to a freaking phenomenal oh, start. Real? Yeah, absolutely. This is insane. Not, Not to mention, I'm sure, I think House of the Dragon is coming back, which you guys still haven't watched. <laughs> man, so, this only, you know, know, the problem is there's only so much time in the day, man. All right. Well, we're going to have to drop that line and say, you know what? If it was that phenomenal and we were super into it, we'll end up watching it. So maybe we will come around to it when things slow down. I think we down, did but really I think like it. But I think we it's did like it, to... but I think there's better stuff calling us out there. I think that's the thing. Than... Like, there's such a thing as something being good, right? Like, something uh-huh. being objectively good that you can watch and be like, wow, this is really, really good. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole nother part where it's like, what calls me to watch? I can't wait to see, right? Like, and as Cause... much as, like, the story was seemed really cool and inter- intriguing and stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily scream to us like, "Hey, come watch us." Yes, right. Like how like, you felt with uh, like Cyberpunk Edge. Delma makes me want to watch it. What do you say? Exactly. Like how you felt with Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Like, exactly. Like it's such a good. It's a it. good show. We really liked it, but it doesn't call us to watch it. Exactly. And, and I agree we only with that, have so 100%. much time, so it's kind of like you have to do what calls you, right? Like what is what you want to to do. Well, yeah, and that's the whole point I'm trying to make. Like the, the like. It, there's also the Amazon uh, Amazon Prime game, right? Uh, of show. show. And, like, that looked amazing. Which and one? The, the Lord of the Rings. Oh, Rings oh, yeah. of Power. Right? And it's like, I'm not watching it yet. Maybe I'll get to it. And I'm sure they spent a lot of money. The story is Wasn't great. It the billion I, I, episode or something-ish? Yes. No, I think, we, the, no, it's just billion dollars for the show. Oh. Yes, yeah, so we saw the first episode and it's great but i'm not watching it (laughs) you know it has to call you you know what i'm saying like it's very it's like i don't know man there's like so many movies and so many you know there's so much music out there right like there's so much good stuff but again there's only so much time well time it's the like there's so much value in your time you can have you you can have all the money in the world you can't make more time exactly doesn't exist and for us who don't have all the money in the world, <laughs> our time is even lower because we don't get to just spend our day doing whatever we want. Exactly. We have work. We have things we have to do. And then we try to find time to, you know, do the fun things that we like. And like when this you finally, podcast. Like this podcast. But, like, when you have that time, it's like, do I force myself to watch something that I'm not, that's not calling me? Or do I spend the time watching the thing that's, like, actually calling me? Correct. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. Well, Batman's coming. We're super excited. excited. And uh, what is next, sir? Well, I think we're all going to be pretty excited for this. But HBO's The Last of Us Season 2 has officially been confirmed and has been greenlit, which, I mean, basically the same shit. And basically, this game, uh, season will adapt the Last of Us Part 2 storyline, not go off on its own weird show direction. It's taken saying very true to the video game, which is a good thing to hear. So, what do you guys have to say about this? So pumped. So pumped. 
And we just literally recorded uh, Last The of Last of Us. Us gameplay from the remake that they did on the PlayStation 5. Um, and we're so, like, it's so exciting because Doodle has never played Last of Us. And she had exposure first to the show. And she really likes the game. I really do. She really likes the game. I really do. And we did have, because we do the Her, Him, and a Mike, and we did the, the first two episodes. And I understand your perspective. And a lot of my perspective shifts from playing the actual game. So, you know, and I don't... So we had mentioned how there are people who will never play the game, right? Because they feel like that's not their thing. Maybe they can't play it. They they don't know how to play video games. Listen, if don't let being insecure about whether you're a gamer or not or playing or, or intimidated by a game, like don't let that stop you from trying this game. Assuming you have, a Assu- yeah. Assuming that you assuming have access you have to it, to like it. The Last of you Us. Definitely do it. Yeah, you have to. It is. It's funny because it's the same, but it's so different. Like it's two, so different. Two stories in two different directions. They're the same story in two different directions, kind of. Yeah, but even like the people in it, like it's it's just a whole different feel. Well, we know for so, a fact that Ellie's gonna be replaced for part two because that's, that's too much of a time jump, right? right? What do you mean? Is she that much older in part two, Ellie? I mean, she's older. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. Wow. Yeah, Madman. That's a great point. Like, like I did yeah, not she think will about be that. replaced. There's no way that they're gonna keep. Like, she's not gonna grow that much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> By that's the gonna time. be really weird. Yes, because you figure they're already working on season two, probably. But if they're already doing it, then they, that means they already had to have a new Ellie. They need to have a new Ellie. Maybe they could just old her up. I don't Maybe think she's so. older than you think she is, and they they younged her down. There's a lot of people, a lot of some of these people. They 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 look like think about all the actors and actresses who've played high school students. Yeah, I agree. Thirty, late, thirty-five. Yeah, yeah, in their thirties, and they're playing these late people. So I mean, it's very easy if she's in her twenties and she's playing this fourteen-year-old girl, then. They're just they all just they have to need do to is change, dress her differently, dress her up, make her look her a little hair, older, yeah. little bags. I mean, it's not that hard to make her look older. Right, so look I'm at the interested. They, they I mean, did that. They de aged them like crazy. Oh my gosh, you guys! So listen, huh? that fire. Oh my god, look at that in the game. It looks just like it. Yes, like real life fire. Versus, I mean, but there's the a lot more smoke. The fact that they were able to do the things that they did with this video game, it's insane. It's, it's, it's really, really something. amazing. You guys got to watch. If You got to watch the gameplay, guys. Watch the gameplay. Check it it's out. So good. And it, it may trigger you to want to play it yourself or just to keep on watching. So the, we will make more. Yeah. And so what we're doing, so what we're doing with this, which I think is pretty cool. Yes. Is we're going to. Uh, we're catching we're, up with the we're, show. We're following the show. Yes. So wherever the first episode, uh, like wherever the episode leads off in the show, we're going to do the gameplay of that episode and we'll stop when they stop right so right now we did the first one we're going to record the second one soon and today and then, is the third, and episode, the third episode so we have to catch up That's so recording so. yeah so That's it's right man man i, I think I, I really like that because we can kind of see how the show and the game kind of go different paths you know obviously the the, the sh- like the, how show. long is the episode huh how long is the episode? I think the first episode was like an hour plus, but I don't know how long episode two was. So it was hour and change, I think. And it took us an hour and like 45 minutes, right? Yeah. To catch up as far as like where it actually ended. So, I mean, it's really cool. It's really cool. It's really good. I'm excited. Um, so, yeah, man. All right, guys. Madman, what's next? Uh, <clears throat> allow me to clear, me to clear my throat, throat young fellow. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty is said to be the uh, CD Projekt Red's priciest DLC ever to be released in the history of their studio. This means it will exceed the cost of any DLC or any of the Witcher games they have created. The, uh, I think a big part of that is Idris Elba being in the game, which I mean, you know, that was probably expensive. Not to mention, they're creating like a whole other section of Night City and like a whole other world. So, you know, that, that's going to be something, you know? 
I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested. What do you well, got to say about this? Cyberpunk is such a big game, such a big world, right? So, obviously, although they have the foundation of it all, it, it, it took them time and money to make, right? Yep. But aside from all that, the time and money that it took to make the actual game, and it took such a hit, right? We, we're forgetting what they went through with this game. And yeah, the, they, they effed up. up. Last, last gen consoles that screwed them over. This yeah, there was a big setback. Yes, there was a big setback when they tried to release. Listen, they the game should not have come out on those lesser systems. I mean, it's, it's impressive. impressive. Like, like it's twenty years from now, we're gonna be like, wow, they, they did, did that. that. But you know, listen, it's still like not good way to play. It looks yes, like it should not have came out, or they should have adapted and made sure that this was gonna run smoothly. Right? We are not looking, obviously understanding that you're playing it on a system that is not the latest system. They want to play the game and have the game actually run, right? So obviously, if you don't have the latest system, it's not going to look as great as it would, right? So that was already understood. They needed to adapt it to that lower system. And that's just the end of it. It was a big mess up. Um, and but, they hit it. That's the thing that took them. Yeah, out. like they yes. literally they blatantly they lied about. They didn't tell people or show the game running correctly on the on the last gen system. And they Listen, said it. They, they said it themselves, like the game, game works fine on last gen consoles. It did yeah, not work like, fine at all. It didn't. It, there was a lot of problems with it. Not just didn't look as good. Like literally, like it would break. Like the game would freeze. Yeah, it wasn't is, running smoothly. Yeah. And they paid for that mistake. They did. So they now, paid for that mistake. Now that they got it up to snuff, now they're doing this expansion. They're going to go all in on the expansion, and you're going to have to pay for it if you want to take advantage because they need to recoup some money. I think we can all agree that it's in way the- beyond its time. Like, like this is a, a beautiful game, very Phenomenal. well made. I can't wait to, for you to do a Doodles Never Have Ever. They, they are picking up costs, like, the um in doodle, doodle that, that relates, relates exactly what we're talking about the last of us if you're, you're seeing like the show don't, don't be afraid to check out the game i, I guarantee you a humongous reason if not the sole reason why cyberpunk 2077 is finally back on people's minds because the netflix series became huge well that's, that's what i was like saying last of us the show and now people are looking at the game like you looked at the game because of the show that is exactly what happened with cyberpunk and that's really cool so well that's what i was going to mention that like they're recouping uh s- status and Costs with the show because it was such a hit, and now with this um, DLC, so it all makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a big deal, and not for nothing. Like these these CG, CD Project Red guys, they made Witcher Three, they gave tons of free DLC, and then they made two big expansions with Blood and Wine being the biggest one, and. That by itself added around 40 hours of gameplay. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, so they cannot do, they cannot do this quest. with Cyberpunk considering the hit that they took yeah. to start. I mean, Blood and Wine was not free. They charged for it, but it was like $15, I think. Yeah. And they came out with another one that was like $15. This one will probably be $30 or $40 by itself, which, you know, if, they, if they're bad. doing it as big as they are and it's a whole new story and all this stuff, like, that's fine. The game's been out long enough that I can pay for another cyberpunk experience. Yeah. Like, I, I agree with that. Like, I, I mean, if they're really putting all this love into it, then they should be able to compensate a bit more as long as it lives up to that. Price. That's the one thing that you can kind of count on. There's no way that they can, like, they're going to put themselves out there and get hit the way that they did before. So no. that, that... Well, it's going to be next gen only, so they yeah, won't mess there's, it up. Full blown confidence in the fact that they're not messing this up. Nope. Not Ooh. at all. All right, man, man. All right. So, the, the next, next and final topic Xbox, Xbox Developer, Developer Direct. Direct. Yes, it happened. And we learned a lot of crazy stuff. For example, Redfall is set to release on May 2nd, 2023. Uh, Forza Motorsport is going to have a single player campaign. Um, the Elder Scrolls Online, all their expansions that they have released in the past will become free. Well, we don't know if they're, free. they're it's not free forever. It's right now they're doing something where they're letting you play all the prior expansions for free 
and leading up to this new game coming out, uh, the new expansion coming out. I don't know how long they're going to keep that, they, it's, but it's not forever. Huh. Well, yeah, that's true. And we also got the bombshell that was Hi-Fi Rush dropped on us, and it's been already been really like going to glowing reviews. People already say it's a Game of the Year nominee. So, we, yeah, a lot of cool stuff happened. So, what do you guys have to say about this? So, yeah, I mean, they, they did go into a lot of different um, things with these games. Um, Minecraft, Legends. Minecraft Legends, multi-platform, by the way. Yeah, well, we kind of knew that, but it actually looks pretty good. For, like It like, has its own unique look, n- unique gameplay spin to it. Like, it's not just Minecraft, but again. Yeah, no. It's like how Minecraft, uh, the Dungeons kind of made a new take on the series. Yeah, it looks like they're going to, like, you see that right there where they're running? Like, that looks pretty cool. They have, like, a, a mount that you can move quickly around the world. Um, They have multiplayer. Like, there's there's a lot that they're going to be adding to this that seems like it's going to be, um, it'll be fun to, to try out at least. Like, I'm not a huge, like, I'm not a huge Minecraft person. Like, I'm not going to you know, 100% go crazy with this, but I'm definitely excited to to check it out for sure. Um, then they did Forza. Doodle, did you see? Did you see the uh, preview for Forza? Yes, I watched some of it. Oh, man. Look at the ray tracing in this thing. Um, it's stunning. It's stunning. It's, it's definitely next level. Um, the weight, the feel of it, when you see how it, fe- like, it's, it's weird to say, see how it feels, but you can kind of watch how the cars move on the track to give you an idea of how it's going to feel because it doesn't look jittery. Like, it's, it gives it a nice, smooth animation. Like it nearly looks like real cars. And they're doing 4K 60 FPS with ray tracing live on the track. Now I'm going to repeat that 4K 60 FPS. Ray tracing Dang. live on the track. Like, it's not it, it, like people didn't think that this was going to be possible in a game. But I could tell you right now, turn 10, they're monsters, dude. Well, listen, they're, they've done so much with this Forza world. And I, I told you that I was, I was really excited to hear this because it, it's one of the better detailed um, games. Like, when you look at the surroundings that they're using. They're using the foundation for Fable, right? Oh, my God. Don't even... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> yo, that's the, yo, that's the reality of what we just... What she just said right now, Doodle. Listen, these cars have to drive so fast. Mm-hmm. Okay? There's a lot more detail in these cars with ray tracing than a person. Okay? A person doesn't reflect. So if you're playing a third-person Fable... You don't have to worry about ray tracing for him. You know that they could put ray tracing in that world to really make... Look at that car. Oh, my God. That's so beautiful. But this tech is going to power Fable. That is wild. And you see the stands? What game have you seen where there's that many 3D stand, 3D models of people in the stands? Yeah. It's phenomenal. When they all you, look different. They're not just like copy and paste. Yeah, and when you but when you look at the stand when when they have a bunch of stands and there's there's like like thousands of people in the stands and it's all individually modeled. That's this is going to be huge. And they're doing the day night cycle for the first time. They have uh, weather effects that are um, random, so it just happens when it happens. Um, like these are all huge, promising signs for Fable. Like, if the game can sustain the speed that this is moving with those graphics, like, it's not a ugly, let's be clear. They didn't add ray tracing and made the game look like it was an old, like, uh, Xbox One version. Yeah, it wasn't compromised yeah, they by didn't, adding they, that. They added it and made the, look at this, look at, jeez. They added it and made the graphics better. This is next-gen only, right? Yeah, this is next-gen only for nice. sure. And oh, wait, notice, wait, hold up. It's, the people call it, Motorsport 8 because it's the eighth entry, which but is, the official name is Motorsport. Motorsport. Forza which is like, Motorsport. There's the game already called Forza Motorsport. Now, now if you ever talk about it, no one's ever going to know what you're talking about. Yeah. I play Forza Motorsport. Which one? No, the, nobody's the new one? Well, you, well, no, no, no. It's just thing. It, when Motorsport 9, if they try to be silly and they throw the number back in or subtitle, they're going to make more. So I'm going to play Forza Motorsport. The new one? Yeah. 
the new new one from like 2023 or like the new one that just came out. Like, yeah, bro, that's maybe be a they minor. won't, dude. Maybe they won't. Like, the, there's there's talk, and you never know. They might be doing a Forza per the generation. You know what I'm saying? Like, they might just be adding new tracks to this game, new cars to this game, eventually peak more graphics. But, I mean, what else do you need in graphics? 4K, oh 60 frames per second. Like, 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 you know what I'm for, saying? Well, like, what else are they going to add graphically to this yeah. game? That they can like they can add snow. They can do that stuff without selling you a new game. Like I would love for them. I love the idea of it being a platform going forward instead of I have to sell you a new game every time. The next time they sell us a game, it should be for the next system where there's going to be a huge leap. Like, like Xbox, Xbox Series X. I agree. Yeah, whatever the new system is, when they could do a huge leap, that's when it should be done. Um. Now, this is the one, and I can't wait. Doodle so badly. I want you to do this as I want to check it out. Um, Hi-Fi Rush was announced and dropped, dropped the, same the same exact day. I that Surprise one out to drop. It looks really cool. That it's- is awesome. And the biggest thing to keep in mind, first of all, right now, people are loving this game. It's getting people talking about potential game of the game year, of the year on That's a game, game that nobody started. even knew about. Yeah. And the... Kill, the killer thing is that this is made by Tangle Gameworks. The, the folks, folks from, from the Evil Within, Within and stuff. stuff. They're a horror-focused game studio. And they said, they made a comment that, you know, they don't want to keep doing horror only forever. And meanwhile, that was them nodding to the fact that they knew they were making this game. Yeah. Um, but people were like, well, like, what, what else, else are you going to make? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sneaky, sneaky. And I can tell you right now, when I first saw this, so when they, when you... um watching the direct they kind of show a little piece of this before they actually do the deep dive and i was like oh my god tango was making a cartoon game yep like that was my initial reaction my initial reaction i'm like come on man but dude when you watch it it looks crazy and and the response is from gameplay to cutscene like they're hand-drawn cutscenes so what how smooth the transitions it's almost obscene because like i i didn't even notice when transitions sometimes yeah Dude, people are saying that, like, obviously it looks really good. We haven't seen it ourselves live playing it, but people are saying it's one of the most beautiful games made. Like, people and are you know like, what I it, saw it. Like, it was like, it reminded me, it made me think of, it's like a Devil May Cry, like a Saturday morning cartoon look, and it looked awesome. And yeah. It's like a rhythm beat to it as well. Music, the art style, it all melded together well. It just seems like people actually like it. Like, not like some little thing that they Yeah, it has a high Metacritic strengths. score. So, you know. And for it to look like that and be that way and then have the element of surprise, nobody saw this coming, it's a huge deal. A, that really like is a big deal. Money. So considering, considering that you're excited for this is also something cool. Yeah, well, absolutely. This is the big, I would say so far, this is the biggest, like, the biggest move surprise that Xbox, drop. Yeah. That, well, number one, the Xbox done for sure. But since... Apex Legends. Apex Legends came out of nowhere, was announced and dropped out of nowhere. That's the and thing. And that like, blew up. This seems like it's. It if has you that guys type of, knew this was coming, if you guys have yep. seen little clips you here and apart, there, you start, you start picking it apart. Up. Yes, yep. and and dissecting the game. Yeah, dissecting it. And this just gave it an opportunity to be like no reviews, no bullshit. Here, you're just welcome. Go play. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. That's it, right? And maybe that's what they need to do. More of, I don't even think right? they had that much confidence in it. Like, they're like, this is cool to make. They didn't have confidence in it. They thought that people were going to, they might know it's a good game. But again, we were just talking about good shows that don't get played. I mean, uh, watched, right? It, like, it doesn't matter if it's good if nobody plays it. So to come out and just put it out there and say, you know what? F it. The game's out. We didn't hype this up. You don't, we're not saying it's amazing. We're not saying it's good. Go play it for yourself. You tell us what you think. And everybody's like, yo, this game is fire. Everybody's so hyped and excited that there's a brand new game that they didn't see coming. And I'm not saying that the game is not everything that made it out to be. But I think that this, maybe we need to take this approach. Maybe we need to be a little less cocky and just kind of release things and stop with the critically acclaim and review and all this other nonsense that just, it, it just... It deteriorates the game before you even touch it. But can the I tell you something? The expectations, the mental expectations of every individual is so different. Of so, this is the thing. You're yeah. right. So this is the this is where I feel is the big game changer. They 
didn't have Game Pass before. So if you don't have Game Pass and you, you say to this is out game, today, yeah. then you have to hope that people see this buy. trailer and want to go buy it. Yeah. But Game Pass puts you in the world where you don't have to do that. You can just put the game out, say, hey, everybody, guess what? Check out this trailer. Looks cool. Well, that game is out Go today. play. Yeah. Go play. You don't, you don't need a, a, a marketing hype up because guess what? If the game's good, people are going to hype it up. And yeah. then, and then people, people who don't have Game to, Pass are going to go buy it. People are going to promote the game for you. And then, guess what? If you don't have Game Pass, the question is, well, do I go pick up the game and pay this much? Or do I go ahead and just get Game Pass and just play it and try other things? Yeah. Right? So it's... Listen, they found a way to advertise their own stuff. Yep. And that's just that. And it is. I'm looking. I want to play so badly. So then they did talk about the um, the new Elder Scrolls Online expansion. It's called, I think, Necrom. And, man, man, like you said, they are releasing all prior, which actually makes me want to hop in because they have, like, a Skyrim version, their storyline. They have... Different. Uh, they have Oblivion. This is based in the Marrowind, uh, Marrowind world, um, which was their first Elder Scrolls on Xbox. That world is brought to life here in this new expansion. So it's, I don't know. It looks really cool. I mean, I love Elder Scrolls, and the way, like, I keep thinking about it like a, um, like this online game, but. You can, they, they said it there and it makes sense. You can, all this stuff is just like, you could play a single player. Yeah. Like you don't, you're online and there's people doing, but if you just do all the main quest by yourself, it's single player game. You know what I'm saying? Like you can just do it and have fun. So I'm really uh, considering hopping in and playing some of the uh, expansions, expansions and check them out and see, especially like Skyrim, the like Skyrim expansion and all that stuff. Like I really... I love those worlds. Skyrim was an amazing, amazing game. There's a reason why people still play it today. There's a reason why they keep remaking it. Yeah. Um, Remastering it, porting it to like every, they put it on Alexa. So yeah. like, that's just like, okay, people like this game. Yeah. So they, it's obviously a, uh, a good it's game. amazing. I, I love that game. Um, so like, I can't wait to the next Elder Scrolls. That's why I'm so hyped for Starfield because the people who, you know, make these games are giving us that Starfield game and I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, but you know, this is, this is pretty cool. And the cool thing is this same team, they're actually making another brand new game. That's not in Sky, uh, Elder Scrolls world or anything else. Um, and I'm excited to see what, what that is. Um, but yeah, this is cool. I'm, I'm excited to kind of check it out. It would be cool if we did a, um, cause it's online, obviously. So that means we could all hop in. Yeah. And it's on Game Pass, so maybe we do a uh, Mad Man Plays. That may be fun. Just to check it out, see yeah. how it is, right? That might be dope. Um, but yeah, so that was that. And then they ended with the big dog. A red ball. Yeah, obviously Starfield is not at this at this presentation. It's going to have its own presentation. Because Starfield's like the, the big dog. dog That's Xbox. the big, That's big dog. Big game. But yeah. this, potential. this looks pretty amazing. It does. It was a surprise um, for me. I didn't expect it to look as good as it did. Yeah, I think um, I think Redfall is going to be a big deal because of Game Pass. Yeah. I think people are underestimating. Like, Game they're Pass. forgetting how good Arcane Games are and forgetting that the only thing Arcane Games have lacked in the past are sales. They always make 90, 88, like 85 and above games the score metacritic like the metacritic has always been top notch and some of the biggest places like ign you're getting nines from them for their arcane games you know yeah. what i'm saying like that's that, that loop was getting tens like, uh, but I mean, it doesn't dude, get respect because people don't buy their games and now death loop is on game pass but it's an old game right yeah like it was on pleasure first that's probably why that's you the weren't problem so, so but this is a big game it's a brand new game People are hyped for this game. It's coming to Game Pass. Once people start playing it and their friends can hop in, you can play co-op all together. Like, I want to do Man Man Plays for this. Yeah, I agree. 
Like, 100%. it's so dope that everybody's going to be able to hop in, have some fun, play. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Like, that's going to be super dope. And I think that's just going to oh, expand out to people who don't have Game Pass. Like, oh, shit. Like, I want to buy that game. And then that expands out to like, oh, shit, I don't have an Xbox. I want to buy an Xbox so I could play that game. Or I'm going to go buy a PC and play that game. Or I'm going to buy it online. Like, this is playing on the cloud, so, right? So, so would dope. you guys consider this direct a success? I think it's a good start. I mean, I obviously wasn't perfect. Redfield did feel kind of like a, almost like a, like a like a like a trailer Redfall. reel, like almost like just showing bits of the game and revealing certain things. They didn't go deep dive like a lot of people wanted, and what would have been nice. But I think that what they showed here was enough to show that there's a like a strong start. Like it's there's a good future ahead. It's not like state of play where it's just the most blandest thing you've ever seen. Well, so you know, I mean, it's it's not that like state of okay. plays are what they are when depending on what content so, they have. But this how about for you, C-Money? So, yeah. So the direct for me, um, I. I really, really like this style. So this is the thing. They have adapted. I wonder if they're going to do it again. But what they did this year was they did a in at E3 during the summer, which is the biggest, you know, event. They did a 12 month cap. Okay. Meaning from they're going to only talk about games that they believe are releasing from June to June. Okay. Okay. So the problem is, is that at that E3, even though they're talking about games that are releasing from June to June, if the game is releasing after the new year, right, it's so far away that you're really only focusing on the next six months that they're showing. Yeah, I, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I agree. So yeah. what I felt they needed to do was I felt like they should have a January show. Basically... Filling out that next six months, right? Yeah, it's too far. It's too. It's yeah, because it doesn't. It doesn't mean like in Ju July. I don't want to hear more about Redfall. That's not coming out till you know later in the year. Like when I, is this game coming out? Uh, May. May. But now January, you do an update, uh, update showcase where you're updating all those games that are coming out in the next six months, right? So it's like you get to see six months at a time. In June, you see the overview for the year. But in January, you see the next six months before E3. What am I seeing? What am I playing? What am yeah. I going to get? And I feel like these were perfect updates. The only thing that I would say was like a little disheartening and is not anything other than just timing is that they didn't have a release date for Forza, which means it's very like... A lot of it people are feeling delayed. it might be delayed out mm -hmm. of the six month window. Yeah. Um, or they just don't know a hundred percent and it'll still come before the six months. But that's the only thing. Like I felt like this was a good overview. I don't need to see like I don't want to see 30 minutes of a just a game. Like I don't want to see like if I, I don't want to see somebody just play for 30 minutes. No, that's because, exhausting, especially if you're gonna play or buy the game. Why do you want to see that much of it? You just yep. want to know that it's coming now, see how the process is going in that it's it's right on track to be released. And you might not see everything that the game has to offer in that 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So in 30 minutes, you might just see one segment, but that's not everything that's in the game. So you jump around, you show me little pieces here or there of different things that are in the game so I have an idea of what's to come, but no big, long, like, individual deep dive on each individual section because then I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to be able to see multiple things so i said to you guys that there was a lot riding on this um direct right before yep. it went what on and and um i just to give a little bit of context obviously I've, I've always played nintendo and um i always had nintendo and then obviously moved on into like not moved on because i always had it but like then the playstation right and mm -hmm. i was not an xbox person at all like just, I couldn't get past just the remote. It's like this monstrosity. How am I going to wrap my hands around it? I can't mm -hmm. freaking play with this. But, and then I ended up marrying like the biggest Xbox fan in the freaking universe, right? Yes. So, um, the, the thing about Xbox is that it's kind of like, it's been like a 
good, a, a really good looking boyfriend without personality, right? And what they have learned and managed to do, right? They're taking pages of what works, right? So now with the Game Pass and taking, they took this page from Nintendo about doing the, the directs. And this was a phenomenal idea for them to showcase their games on their own terms, doing their own thing. But beyond that, what I think that it's really going to work and what they are starting to give to their games right now is that personality, right? I feel like the, um, the what's the game that you want me to, High? High on Life? High Five Rush. Oh, High Five, five Rush. Yes, yep. yes, that, the, the Redfall. Um, even the freaking Minecraft Legends, you're starting to see them given that dimension of personality that people want to engage with, that people want to play, that like, which has been the charm that Nintendo has. And honestly, the PlayStation exclusive games have a lot of. So I think they're tapping into that and making it, um, making it more personal. And I think this is going to be really good if they continue in like on this path. Um, I've talked about like uh, uh, John Wick, right? Yep. And um, I've talked about the what's his name? I'm blanking out Keanu on his Reeves. name. Keanu Reeves being like a cold actor, right? That he yep. can't do anything that you kind of feel personal with until he tapped into his type of movies, which was from The Matrix. I haven't seen him do anything that I feel like he's really connected to until John Wick. And um, I feel like this is what's happening with Xbox right now. I feel like nice. um, uh, Keanu Reeves is a cold actor and he's found his niche and his his way of connecting to people as an actor. And I think that Xbox has, you know, like X, uh, Halo with the armor and very like, it, it, I don't know, cool it, it they playing. are crisp, but they're also very... Like, you don't feel that connection to the like, game. If you look, like, like uh, look at the original, original Xbox, Xbox library, you can tell that a lot of games, games were just about having fun. There yes. There weren't any gripping narratives. Like, like even, even, even while PlayStation took to, like, the late PS3, early PS4 generation, generation to find their groove with third-person narrative uh, games, like, the PlayStation was actually all over the place. But after, I think Last of Us is what made it, like, all right, these are the kind of games that we're known for now and stuff. So I think the Xbox, even though they're more all over the place, they're trying to... Find that balance between PlayStation, like their narratives and stuff like that, and the games that they're kind of known for ish, which after the generations, Halo, Forza, and Years of War were the diet, which was very unhealthy. So, you know, they're starting to throw more in and starting to expand more, you know, you know? Well, so the, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm the, the, the Xbox, the ultimate junkie, Xbox, the Xbox junkie here, <laughs> um, who loves all things Xbox, but, I will say that, um, like, I, I love what they've shown. I love the way they did this direct. Like, I feel like they're growing in positive ways. Um, I agree. I will say that, you know, if you think about PlayStation and if you think about Nintendo, one thing that they have 100% in common is that all of their games that are successful are third-person games. Exactly. Every single one. Nintendo does not have a first person game. Actually, that, that you has bring it up, but no, not that at all. Has not even one. Any consequence whatsoever. PlayStation no longer has a first person game of I mean, that was consequence. Killzone, but that's, that's like disappeared. Yeah, well, it took the place by Horizon. Um, Horizon, which is a third person game. What do you say, Madman? Can you repeat that? Killzone, Killzone. was Killzone. a first They're person shooter. For a little while yeah, but, the the, PS2, but that PS3. team dropped the first person shooter. And became a third person powerhouse. Power, yeah, I mean that's what that game is. Third person. Hopefully, like the back of next. So I feel like <laughs> the the yeah, but I mean I also like it's when you play Xbox games. Arguably speaking, I hope you like looking at a gun, right? Because that's all you see when you're playing, right? It's that's your first person experience. It's well, that's a gun a Forza all the time. Well, yeah. Well, again, well, I mean, maybe they'll add guns to Forza. Yeah, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I like. Know they are everything they do is first person for the most part right like obviously you have gears right but it's almost like gears is a great game i love gears of war but gears of war is like 
the first person shooter version of a third person game meaning it's it's very like about the gunplay that you do right so the systems that they make for it are about that whereas it's not about telling the story you know like last of us when they the way they climb up something or mm-hmm. like it's all intentional it's not like for the purpose. quick movement for the yes, gunplay the right purpose. like when you shoot in the last of us you're not shooting because they're trying to make a a hardcore shooter no you are playing a game that they're purposely making it that these are just people who are playing the uh, who are living in the world that you're playing you're shooting out of reaction. Yeah. You're like shooting you out of shoot. like, oh, no. they, the they're giving you, you a feeling before you get to do the action. Like, they're not military team, people not. who are in this world. They're mm-hmm. regular people who just have to shoot people and do things to survive, right? And that's the same for all of their games when they're doing them. You know, these are not professional people. Like Alloy wasn't a professional fighter on Horizon. She just, she fights to survive. Right? Yes. I mean, they even found a way to make Spider-Man, Spider-Man third person. The, the one where you're see, swinging around the city. Maybe that's the charm, right, guys? Maybe that's that thing that you connect with. So, but that's what it is. But what Xbox needs to see is that they're going everywhere. They have all different types of games. They're they do have some third, part, third person games. Were. But they're not hitting that that, that bar, like, where, like they're not yeah, masterpiece like they're, after masterpiece after masterpiece. That's well, the, no, I mean, no, I don't, I don't feel that. I no, feel no, like their masterpieces. I feel like their master. Well, no, they've been critically killing it. In 2021, yeah. they were the the highest rated publisher for the year. Last year, they didn't come out with anything. Um, but their quality bar has been high. What they did come out with last year was Pentiment, which was super highly rated, and I, f- I forget what else. Grounded finally released, super highly rated. So as far as making good stuff that rates high, they have that covered. Like, they do that. Different. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, you look at the OG Xbox library. They're a whole different place. Like, that was when they started. They were like, they just made everything exclusive. Like, they just came out with all the randomest stuff. Like, Blink's the Time Sweeper and Jet Set Radio Future and Fusion Frenzy and stuff like that. Like, they were, so, they were willing to try so many new things. Shenmue 2 even. So, you know, like, well, that was life. Well, it's just pricing. The way things, money is a factor. Right. So they can't just be willy nilly. Right. They have to do things that work. The problem is they know that these games work. They know that PlayStation games work. Okay. They know that. Now, to be fair, you got Hellblade 2 that's going to be coming out hopefully later at the end of this year. We don't know, but that's what we're hoping. Um, That's going to be third person and it's stunning. It's going to be the best looking game that probably has ever been released. Um, And that's going to be a big step. But I feel like that feeling for what that game is is diminished a little bit because it's a part two for a game that wasn't an Xbox game. Um, so, like, I feel like it also is a very specific type of game, you know, with like the mental health and kind of scary horror. Like, I think that's gonna it's gonna be amazing. But it's what we're what I'm looking for is for that cinematic story. You know what I'm saying? Where you don't spare any, you don't spare any dollar. Nothing for their, is, their nothing is no sacrificed, mercy. right? Cobra Kai game, no, no mercy. You want well, you want the 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 action. You want the feeling. You want the graphics. You want a rounded game that's gonna suck you in in every aspect story, of it. A yes, fucking gut wrenching like mm-hmm. story that brings me in, and I want to see the best graphics ever, but all tied together. No, and I Last of Us 2 made you like almost vomit and shit like that. But no, like, that Last of Us 2 was, and listen, was amazing. This is the situation. Um, Xbox came in and obviously we had Nintendo, we had PlayStation, and they needed to find... Um, <laughs> their niche. Their, yeah, their, their spot, right? And obviously they have to find where what is commercial and then what makes them unique. And I think that... Um, they need to make what the recipe, the secret recipe that's on Nintendo and on PlayStation, they need to find their version of that, but still with that same foundation. And that's that's what I feel we are heading to. I think that's the direction in which all this is going. And like- if if it goes between Game Pass and continuing the path of games like these i think that they're going to be a fuck a powerhouse like this is this could be 
with what takes them to a leading situation. Yeah, I, even Nintendo, so. I just thought about Nintendo for a second. Like, even they don't have, like, that one kind of game. Like, let me just... Four games on my mind right now. Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Pokemon. Mario's a platformer. Zelda's an action-adventure. Metroid's a third-person shooter slash uh, Metroidvania. And Pokemon's an RPG. It's a completely different genre. Well, technically, Metroid Prime is a first-person Yeah, exactly. The first, I'm seeing Metroid as in, like, the whole Metroid franchise, which they go from thir- uh, first-person shooter... Uh, oh, I, did I say third person? Yeah, you said third person. I'm sorry. I know it's a first person. I just said the wrong thing. Okay. First person, like Metroidvania. Well, technically, right now, the only Metroid that exists is third person. Um, the, They haven't released a current... Oh, current gen, yeah. Current it's basically gen been Metroid, Metroid that's first uh, person. Red. That was the last one. Yeah, and so... Like Returns and all but, that, the, so. I mean, listen. Xbox has first person on lock. Okay, they're the first... If you want first person, you play Xbox because that's what they have. It's just that they need to go. Like, there's a lot of unknowns. Fable, right? We don't know if that's first person or third person. It should be third person. All the other games are third person. If it's first person, I'm probably going to be really disappointed. Even if it's beautiful. I mean, I'm going to love it because I I love Fable. But I'll be really disappointed if it's not third person. Right? So you have Fable. You have Hellblade. So those are big, two huge games that can be Amazing, but we also know Fable more than likely is not going to be a story like super cinematic experience. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a open world RPG, right? So it's going to be beautiful, but it's not going to be the the that detail mm-hmm. like that. You almost don't want it big. You know what I'm saying? I don't want open world. I want an experience that you make me travel from here to here, and I go through that story a hundred percent the way you put it in place for me perfectly. Yeah. And even though I'm only going to play it one time, maybe two, I want it. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Take me on a roller coaster. Take me on a ride that is perfectly scripted, that I experience exactly what That's you want thing. me to experience. Because the, the, and take me where you want me to go. Like, find your notebook, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I know that Starfield is good. I mean, I've seen the freaking, and I'm That'd like, great. it's like jaw dropping, yep. right? But it's also, it's not a, I don't feel like it's going to take you to that no. like place, right? right. There's a lot like, of you can like the story it's overall. Freaking, it's like very metal, very like you know cold. Like I want wrap me up in a freaking blanket and make me feel something, and still give me the 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 beauty like you want to feel and warm the and action and pull me in, make me feel like I'm that character going through that. Let's drop like like. Strip down the aliens, strip down the vampires, strip us down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. To, to. Yeah. Like, they shouldn't cancel it out entirely. But again, no, okay. no, 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 no. I'm sorry. For, for I'm a speaking new game. of for something one game, that I want from Xbox. Give it to us. Give Take us Take out that. all the bullshit. I know, listen, this is the thing. Xbox is not stupid. They want to make money too, right? That's why they make these four player games. That's why they make these games that you can play a long time. Yes. Get these people coming. PlayStation, that's why PlayStation doesn't want to do Game Pass type shit. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't want to give you their stuff. They want to make that one experience that even though you are only going to play it one time, you paid for a premium experience. Yeah. So, think about it. If I play a game that's multiplayer, I maybe play it for maybe three months, right? Maybe. If that. Okay. So... If I'm a Game Pass only, not Ultimate, if I just do regular Game Pass, that's $30, right? Yeah. Well, if I play uh, The Last of Us Part Two one time and I bought it when it came out, I paid $60. Now it's mm-hmm. $70. That's seven months of Game Pass that yes. they get one shot from one person, mm-hmm. right? So just be in a month. Like, like, honestly, like, like with the Game Pass situation, unless, unless you're like some physical junkie, junkie who wants to keep all their favorite games physical... physical there's, There's not, not like, like why, why not just get a game, game pass? It's gonna be digital anyway. So yeah, but the just... point is, is that's why PlayStation doesn't do that. Now the thing is, that's also why Xbox is not doing the other side because they want people games that are gonna keep people in the and subscription. And I get that. And guess what? You guys have it locked down. Yeah, you guys you have it them. down. But this is what I want. You're you're my party. Bitch, Xbox, you know what I'm saying? We cool. We got to hang out. We got to have some fun. We're going to party. But I want you to take me on a date. Yeah. Take me Alone. on a ride of emotions. Just you and me. Let's yep. ride. Nobody right? else around. Nobody else. Nobody just pull like on that. my heartstrings. Take a girl out. Pull out that chair so I can take a seat. And just 
you know. Deliver on the romance. Deliver on that romance and, you know, you. make me want you. more. I get You I know, get you make down. me want to beat the whole game. <laughs> I got sex for you. Right yeah, for real. I feel We got to go all that. the way, Xbox, if you give that to me. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Jazz-based sex with It's a... Um, yeah, that's what I, that's what I want. I, that's what I feel like they're missing. I want them to show it to us again, even if Fable is third person, and that'd be cool. It's gonna be I, that's what I, it better be for for the most part. I, I, that's what I want. Um, but even if it is, I it's not going to be that. Hellblade Two is probably gonna be that, but the topic being like the oh, wait, uh, like the mental psychological mm-hmm. thing. Is gonna be dope, but that's stressful. That you know what I'm saying? People. Like, I want to go through a story that's that's relatable mm-hmm. to yeah. like, even if it's in the future. Even or if in it's a, unrelatable, yeah, even still if it's relatable. relatable, the mm-hmm. people make it relatable. Humanize them for me to feel. Well, I guess you know what I was thinking that I guess yeah. it's more similar to Hellblade than we realize. Psychonauts. It deals with people like that. Well, Psychonauts you know, was eventually. great, and that was a third person game. But again, that's not an ultra realistic, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it's super like high end game. It's a phenomenal for game. It makes it stick out. out. Yeah, phenomenal game. And again, that's what I'm saying. Xbox has been killing it on the game front. They're making top notch games. They're showing that they're they're not the Xbox in the past that was releasing these 60, 70 Metacritic games. They are letting the developers do what they need to do to make a great game. Just and money the games are great. They're great. They're phenomenal. They're so like amazing games, but I'm still missing what I want. And like the one of the guys on Iron Lord podcast, Lord Cognito, he says he just has hashtag just one. He just wants one mm-hmm. that is their PlayStation equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Just I get give me that. one. Give me I get one. That. And again, I didn't Hellblade know that, to a lot of people. That. Hellblade to a lot of people is going to be that because it's going to be very cinematic. It's just the topic is mm-hmm. the problem. It's too. Like, there's still going to be a lot of people who don't want to deal with that in their head. Exactly. And listen to all those voices and shit that Mm -hmm. fucks with you, right? So as much as it's going to be a great game and I think it's going to be popular, uh, I think it's also going to turn off a lot of people. Um, So I... Did I say you're going to get all those things with Game Pass? Son of a bitch, I didn't see it. Um, But I feel like that's going to be the thing. I just want it to be... Give me one. At Mm -hmm. least one. I agree. Give me one Last of Us. You know, something... Like that. Yep. Like, what was that line from um, from uh, the proposal with Ryan Reynolds and um, at the end and Sandra Bullock, um, Xbox, marry me because I would like to date you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, marry me because I'd like to date you. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's the, it's the, you got to watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. What, what it's movie a good movie. It's You'll get movie. it if it's you watch movie. it. What's it called? The proposal. Oh, I've seen the proposal before. I just don't remember the lines. At the end, that's what he says. Because, yeah. Oh, I see. Well, oh yeah, because they've been the whole time. I see. Yeah. yeah I, I think. Um, I think we wrap. That's it a up. wrap. That hey was a guys. spicy wrap. A very Xbox themed wrap. Guys, if you like this, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We oh, wait, real- don't wait, forget. wait, Madman, check Madman, it out. You went up a little bit. You're yep. six forty four. Whoa, six forty four. I didn't yeah, even know Yeah, that's Whoa. pretty cool. Buddy, but let's also let's guys? also not forget. We got that giveaway. Oh, we forgot the other the giveaway. The pop giveaway. I mentioned it, and then we oh, went right over it, guys. It. We got the pop giveaway, which is over here. Funko Pop giveaway. Uh, we are on the on the first. We're going to be picking somebody. Yes, we are. Okay, we're going to be picking someone. Nothing's going to stop us from that. The question is, is that somebody you? And if you want that to be you, go check out our pop unboxings. Check them out. Subscribe. See, subscribe. See which one you like. Tell us why you should get that pop. And go check out our it other cost content. You a dime. Not at all. Just Not listen to good Not content. Comment. Give us your opinion. Give us your take. Con- engage Talk with us. us. Right. Ex- give us what we want from Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Don't be scared around us. You know? We're so yeah, cool. Yeah. So, guys, <laughs> just remember, come check out the channel. There's a lot of other stuff on here. We do a lot of different podcasts. Covering a lot of different things. So, yeah, man. All right, man, man. Take us out. Take us out. Guys, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, man, man. Out.